All right. I have been waiting to do this for quite some time. Interview my favorite interviewers. Some of the DJs <laughs> from all over Texas that I get to meet whenever I'm out there traveling or I've just met on the road. And uh, one of my favorite people, the one who gets to do the first one, one of my wild, weird ones, Mr. Kerry Dean. Kerry, how you doing, buddy? Man, if I do any better, I'll be taking a nap. Thanks for your interruption. <laughs> <laughs> No, man, uh, I'm, glad to, I'm glad to do this, man. This is really cool. I'm glad you thought of it. Well, thank you so much, man. Uh, Kerry D uh, is living in Corsicana. He's out there at 106.9 The Ranch. And I wanted to kind of ask you some questions, get a little background, and uh, talk to you about uh, you as a DJ. So let's start with the obvious oh. questions. What town did you grow up in? Where'd you grow up? Uh, well, I'm not grown up yet, but I'm still living the town. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still living in Corsicana, which is pretty cool. Is that where you're from? Yes. Cool. Uh, now, let me ask you, if you're anything like me, you probably like had some DJs that you listened to growing up. Who were some of your favorites when you were growing up? You know, as a kid, you know, growing up my age, we always, you know, Bill Mack was on, you know, everybody's grandparents radio. And so you kind of grew up hearing that voice. And so that was always awesome. Cool. And then, but the DJs that really, really secured it for me was at La Bella and Rodeo the Zoo in Dallas. And I heard those guys and what they were doing, their sense of humor, the thought they put into their, their craft. Yeah. And just really being the cool guys on the stage and on the air. You know, when you're in high school, I mean, that's that's the time, man, when radio is just like really, really big for you. And it's really a big part of your life. And I saw how those guys became, you know, everyday people, everyday with a name that everybody knew. And I'm like, yeah. God, to be that cool. And do, I've got to do that. I've got to do that. So it was always a dream to do, because, really because of those guys. Cool. Uh, do you know, like, the first job that you had, like, radio job that you had? Do you remember that? It's been it's been years, buddy. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. In fact, I uh, went uh, went to college for a while at uh, Navarra College. At that time, they had one of the top radio TV programs in the state. And I went for a while. Of course, like you know, fell in love, quit college, quit school, and everything else. You know, got a job, had kids, and then uh, when that went the way that it should had. <laughs> <laughs> then, I, uh, then I said, you know what? I'm going back to that dream. And so I knew that, you know, anybody on the street can walk into a radio station and go, hey, man, I want to talk on the radio. I want to talk on the radio. And, but I went in with an idea. And the idea was, and this is uh, 20, over 20 years ago, I'm like, there's a really, really great music scene that's about to pick back up in Texas. And there's a lot of music out there that nobody's getting to hear. And I want to showcase that music. So I started a show called The Farm because I walked into – the station manager's office and said, I have an idea instead of saying I want to be on the radio. So I went in with an idea instead of saying I want to do that. Yeah. And that idea has worked ever since. That's awesome. Man. And what, what station was that? That was at KAND in Corsicana, Texas. In Corsicana. Yeah. And so it's, and have you worked for many stations or just? Uh, I worked for four altogether. In fact, I worked, uh, left KAND after a couple of years or so doing a specialty show there went to an FM station uh, in a little town about uh, 40 miles away. Okay. And then I took, uh, that took it to FM. Then I went to Waco to uh, Low Star 94. And oh. then the ranch in Corsicana, 106.9 of the ranch came open. In fact, I interviewed with them when they were still finishing up their studios in Fort Worth at Sunday Square. In fact, I had an interview with Andy Meadows in a bank across the street from the, the studios there in Fort Worth. So at one point, I was doing Saturday night in Waco, Sunday night at Ranch in Corsicana, Monday through Friday in the mornings, plus doing festivals all day Saturday and shows when I could Friday and Saturday night. Man. So. <laughs> You're devoting your life to the scene, man. Well, you know, it's just getting out there and paying, you know, it's like, a, it's like you know, artists do. You get out there and you pay your dues and, and you get out there and you go, hey, let me in and, and uh, you know, let my chick in, give us a barbecue sandwich and a six pack of shiners. I'll host your festival for you. <laughs> so, you know, Love it. <laughs> so, yeah. you know this, and it's really cool because it's past September after years of doing all this, I was able to go to host four days in Kentucky at the vet city motorcycle music festival, four days. And here's the guy that used to get in with a barbecue sandwich and a six pack of shiner, let my chick in. All of a sudden I'm standing in front of Jackal and puddle of mud and, 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 and all these bands like that for four days, you know, I went to Kentucky, you know, yeah. and though they let me in and feed me, they put me in a hotel, paid me well, and, you know, and it's just a great time. But, but yeah. I was thinking while I was on that stage during that four days, man, remember how small that stage was that you're standing on, you know, when you got the sandwich, you let your chicken in like, and a six pack of beer. 
And uh, so it really, you pay your dues, you get to move up and do this kind of thing, which I think is really, really cool. But I also remember some of the most real music I've ever seen or heard was still on those small stages. And that's what I started out doing is to present those bands. Yeah. Well, so, so bands like that, you would have the bigger bands. Let me, let me ask you, you, I know you're a fan of rock. I know you, oh, I love that stuff too, because it, there it is. Hey, breed. Nice. <laughs> so whenever you were, whenever you, cause you came up to them and said, man, I know the scene for the farm, the yeah. first one that you did. Right. So was that from just going out and seeing bands or how did you start getting into that scene? It was a little bit of everything. It was, you know, because my dad was a musician. You know, he, he was, you know, he was a, worked at, you know, office job executive, but he was always a lifelong musician. So we always had all kinds of, and my mom was a big music fan. So we always had all kinds of music around the house at all times. You know, my dad is, you know, because I was born at 61. So I was, you know, I was exposed to Fraulein in early age, but my dad's also the guy that turned me on to Deep Purple when the Machine Head album came out and Pink Floyd when Dark Side of the Moon came out. And so, nice. and then as I grew, you know, until my dad passed away, we always exposed each other to music all the time of all kinds. I mean, I took my dad to see Prince two months before my dad passed away, you know, and he, and he loved it. Nice. But, you know, but, but there's, it's just always been a music thing. It's always about the music. Yeah. It's yeah. about being a goofy dick. <laughs> <laughs> but that's, but, you know, if you can be stupid and play some great music at the same time, dude, it's a party. And that's yeah. Great. That's greatness, man. Uh, who was the first band from the scene? This would kind of say like whenever you really got into it that you remember going like, all right, this, I like this scene. I like this band and finding out they kind of went together. The, the <laughs> scene. Well, really when what I call the Nuevo Tejas scene was a new Texas movement. I think the person that really started, you know, you know back there was Willie and, you know, and, and Towns and, you know, and, and, and Ray Wiley and all these great people that seen you know, for all these years. And then uh, when it kind of started getting new again, then Robert O'Keefe popped up. Then you started seeing all these guys playing, you know, the, you know then you see you know, Tommy Howerson was there, then the Max Darling come along, there's Ed Burleson, you know, Martin David Menders, you know, Kevin Deal. I mean, all these kind of artists started popping up. And then, then you know, another movement came from that when you had Pat Green, and then everybody started following that scene. Yeah. And then the whole scene just kind of melded together, you know. And you go to Willie Spindix in the late 90s, like out in, in Lucan Bike with 13,000 people, you know, and you had, you know, Emmylou Harris on the stage. You know, in a, in a white dress with black leaves and red flowers when the sun was going down. And she's standing with the guitar playing. You know, and earlier in the day, you had T.D. Bingo from Austin playing. <laughs> <laughs> That's so, crazy, so, man. So you got to see all these bands, all these different styles. You know, Monty Montgomery. You know, Mighty Clouds of Joy were in the morning. You sleep at the wheel. You know, then, yeah. then you get, you know, these guys throw it in. There's like, wow. You know, so you really got an introduction to a lot of music. You know, like Monty Montgomery played. You know, you get all these introductions to people at these festivals. So festivals were like the, the best dollar spent in Texas music, you know, especially at that time. And it still is for that fact. But, but you get so many festivals. So festivals are always like the thing. And then just start researching. Even though we didn't have that much of the internet back then all the time. So I dial up, you know, word of mouth. Word of mouth was a deal. It had to be word of mouth. And what's weird is hearing about these stories about bands um, that blew up in the scene, uh, like your Corey Morrow's, your Randy Rogers. Yeah. This is before the internet. I mean, it had to be strictly word of mouth. And that mouth had to carry to other towns before yeah. you had social media. So I always, for one thing, because as a DJ now, I, I always wonder, dude, how was anybody a DJ before the internet? Like, I always, <laughs> like, I know you had magazines and maybe phone this. calls, but. Yeah, let me tell you this. In fact, I talked about KND, the first start. I had a buddy that worked there. Yeah. And in fact, did a morning show with him for a while. I went to the ranch uh, years later. But I would go into the radio station because I knew artists were sending CDs to the station. And I knew they weren't going to play them. So you hey, grabbed those. Hey, can I have this? Hey, yes. can I have this? Hey, can I have this? And so, you know, it didn't take me long. When I started doing the show, I, w I had shatter boxes full of CDs. Shatter boxes. I mean, what better to carry those, those CDs around than a shatter box, right? So then uh, I actually went at one point to a case company and had them build me three tour cases. They held 500 CDs apiece, and I had them all in alphabetical order. So nice. I would take those to me when I do the radio show, like a wake up, undo the front, stand them up, boom, everything was there. So, you know, so it just, it's fun. That's cool, man. <laughs>
Uh, well, let me let me ask you a question. Uh, was there anybody out there that just blew you away the first time you heard them? And I'm sure there's a lot of bands like that because I can think of a few bands that just like first time I heard them, I'm like, what? There's some bands that before no anybody had heard about them, who is a band that maybe that just really sticks in your mind? Uh, and lately? Lately's good. <laughs> Copper Chief. Copper Chief is incredible. Copper Chief all day long. Copper Chief is just uh, one of these bands that I, I, I had gotten their album. They wanted me to write a review. I wrote a review for 15 tracks on one album. I thought, my goodness, ridiculous. for the first album for these guys. And so I wrote the list of the album, wrote the review. I thought, well, I got to go see it. When they get close, I will. I went in this bar, opened up, uh, got us, walked into the bar, ordered a seven up because I played on stand for 45 minutes. And last call, I was still drinking seven up after I listened to play two hour and a half sets. Nice. And it absolutely blew me away the entire time. Yeah. The entire time. But somebody that blew me away that I went and saw way, 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 way back, I thought was just amazingly cool, was Wayne the Train Hancock. Wayne the Train Hancock. Wayne the Train Hancock. Okay. And if, in fact, I saw him one time at Havitas in South Austin. I had him autograph a cassette. <laughs> <laughs> That's old school right there. But anyway, I mean, if, if you'll go listen to Thunderstorms and Neon Signs, Okay. Just one, it is such a throwback to Hank Williams Sr. In fact, Hank Williams, Hank, Hank 3, actually put two or three of Wayne the Train songs on his first release. Oh, cool. So it's that style, but it's That's just it. so freaking cool. Where are they from? Austin. Austin, Austin, you're okay. Yeah, they'll go record an album in two days. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> man that's phenomenal um well you've done like uh I, I see the we as djs the only time we see each other at festivals now now i'm lucky i i do music so i get to travel around i get to see you as much as i can right. uh and i've seen you a lot of times but usually we only get to see each other at the festivals man so what now that we're in the scene what, what are some of your favorite festivals to be a part of every year uh, one that I, I i really really super duper miss is uh Tommy Iverson's family gathering? Oh yeah, Tommy Iverson's family gathering. I mean, you're there. You know, you get there. Hopefully, the you know the Wednesday night or get the early Thursday morning, so you see all three days of the music and 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 it's called the family gathering. That's what it was like. I mean, I still have I will have lifelong friends. That festival's now done in over twenty years, and I was able to make it to over half of them. But just the music and the camaraderie. I mean, you know when. You know, Mike Crow and I were able to stand on the stage and sing "Happy Birthday" to Leon Roush. <laughs> uh -huh. You know, and he's going to come out there and play. Then you know, and you're on stage making, you know, telling Gary P. Nunn he can't go out on the stage because the T-shirt's got P on it. You know, <laughs> you know. Then I remember. Oh, the, that's the, cool, man. The very last night of Tommy Iverson's family gathering every year, it was Tommy Iverson that played. <clears throat> Excuse me, and. Tommy would sometimes play for hours and hours and hours. I remember walking back to my camp one night when Tommy was playing, it was like 3, 3.30 in the morning. I walked back to my camp to open up a beer and sit there and listen to Tommy through the woods playing Almond Brothers. And then the last night of the, of the, the last night of the last festival that he was doing, we took the performance clocks down off the stage after he had played for several hours and then set them back to the original start time. <laughs> 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 just but, you know, do it all over again yeah but willie's picnics are great i've been to a lot of one day festivals that are really really cool cool i was i was very very honored i got to open the stage for willie's 40th anniversary picnic and that's just one of the coolest things on the planet oh that is awesome man you know just a lot of things like that just but the thing about that is is a lot of times you of course through the years you do a lot of shows with a lot of people and a lot of times but it's good to run back into those people like billy joe shaver you know, that says, hey, man, there's not enough room on the stage for two course can of boys. What are you doing? You know, it's just, it's just, you know, that feeling to do something really, really cool. It's just you know, getting to present the music, you know. Yeah, and that's, man. that's really, so, really cool. Well, let me, let me ask you, um, with the station, you've been with the, the station that you're on right now. How long have you been with the, with the ranch? Since 2004. 2004 man 16 <laughs> years of rock and roll in that bad boy and uh well what's your what's your yeah. favorite what's been the best things what's let's, let's start with some of the hard things about being doing what you're doing i know what they are but but go ahead and let the masses know some of the some, especially with you because you do it your way and you have certain things that you do but what's what some of the tough parts about the job the hardest thing for me sometimes is just the hours mm. 
like I said, you know, on Friday, you know, I, I get there like what, five thirty, whatever, or a minute till six. <laughs> <laughs> it's morning radio right there, baby. That's I know about that. <laughs> So you, you get there, you go through your day. You know, of course, we're a small station, so we get to do everything from, you know, get the oil change in the truck to, you know, music programming, you know, anything, remotes, anything that's going on in a small station, you know, you have your hands on everything, so we do that. So if I work all day long at the station, you know, nine, ten hours, come home, take a shower, run and do a show that night, you know, they don't put the headliner on until 11 o'clock and it's an hour away. Well, you, you know, by the time you get those guys off the stage, you get back home sometimes, it's 2.33 in the morning, but you might as well play the gig. <laughs> <laughs> so, right. yeah, like that day alone is 22 hours. But yeah. that is good. But things I enjoy about it, I love reading. I read at least three hours a day easily. I read at least three hours a day across the board and all kinds of stuff. And the, the, I don't know, anything after that is not hard. Yeah. Really, reading is not hard. <laughs> Uh, if it were, I can understand why it would take me three hours a day. <laughs> <laughs> Especially at that just, pace, man. Just so many variables to it, you know. But, you know my, cool. my, favorite thing, my favorite things also are the things that I don't like about it. Yeah. Because it's all, it's all part of the same thing. Hey, the pill is still part of the banana, baby. Enjoy it. <laughs> don't eat it but enjoy it <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome man I, I feel the exact same way about radio man it's got a lot of tough uh, moments but uh, getting to do what we love to do means getting some tough moments and you know you just kind of soak them in depending on who you are I know I do I try to soak those, those moments in yeah. also it, and the, the guy I'm doing the show with now Keith James I mean he's been around for a long long time he's he's fun he's ridiculous and we both in, know, know and enjoy that, that Whatever we throw up in the air, the one's going to catch it, yeah. and so that really makes it fun. And uh, he and I have just about got it to the point where we can do it without a net. Tell her. And, you know, I don't even know who a net is, but we can do it without her. <laughs> <laughs> she screws up morning shows, man. I know her well. <laughs> we have been, man. I want to uh, thank you, man, for for talking with me uh, and and sitting down and chatting. I've been talking with Carrie Dean from uh, one hundred six nine The Ranch in Corsicana. He has done Texas music for many, many, many years, and uh, I, it's just one of my favorite people that I've met on the road. And I, I thought it'd be a good chance to sit down and talk with him, find out more about him. Carrie Dean, thank you so much for uh, joining us, man. I appreciate it. Much love, brother. I appreciate it, too, man. Have fun. Right back at you. <laughs>